Thank you for joining us for this presentation entitled Reinventing the Eye Exam, Four Ideas That Could Change Ophthalmology. This presentation is going to be about concepts that we think could change our field. We're going to present one device that we think can achieve the goals that we lay out in this presentation. And it's very important to understand that we think that this device can be built with existing technologies. However, it has not yet been built, and because of that it may never actually work. You may wonder why we're presenting this at such an early stage. The three reasons are that we hope to inspire people to think differently about our field by showing these ideas. We hope to stimulate discussion. And most importantly, we hope that people will present alternative solutions that may be better than the ones that we present. I'd like to thank my co-inventors, Voss Sada and Paul Updike. I'd also like to thank key people at Doheny, especially our president, Dr. Stephen Ryan, our vice president, Marissa Goldberg, and my research fellow from Shanghai, Yanling Ouyang. Why should we reinvent the eye exam? Well, we think it may be time to do so. In 1851, Hermann von Helmholtz invented the ophthalmoscope. Ten years later, Giraud Toulon invented the binocular and direct ophthalmoscope. In 1911, Goldstrand invented the precursor to the modern slit lamp. And in 1947, Scapins invented the headset that we know as the modern binocular and direct ophthalmoscope. So you see, about every 50 years, there was an invention that we still use today in the clinical examination of our patients. But it's been 60 years since the last invention. Moreover, these instruments are mostly qualitative, they're subjective, they're somewhat inconsistent, and they're undocumented. And I think the most important deficiency right now is that they are qualitative. For comparison, general medicine had quantitative techniques developed in the same epochs as these instruments were developed. For example, the clinical thermometer was developed and that gave a number to body temperature. The sphygmomanometer was popularized by Cushing around the turn of the century that gave a number to blood pressure. Eindhoven, just a few years later, invented the first practical EKG, which gave a number to heart disease. And Wallace Coulter invented the Coulter counter in 1947 that gave a number to blood diseases. We feel that the epidemics of eye disease that are upon us right now necessitate more quantitative techniques, and ophthalmology must be more quantitative in the next century. In addition to the, the necessity of time, we think that time may be running out to adopt these quantitative techniques. For instance, age-related eye diseases are expected to increase as the global elderly population doubles by the year 2040. In this graph from the United Nations, what you see is a pink line showing children under the age of 5 and a blue line showing people over the age of 65. And for the first time in human history, around 2020, there'll be more elderly people in the world than there are children under the age of five. Interestingly, this trend is projected to be more pronounced in developing countries than in developed countries. Again, in the graph in the top line, you see the rate of growth of the elderly population in developing countries, and the pink line shows the rate of growth of the elderly population in developed countries. We all know that the epidemic of diabetes mellitus is unprecedented in human history, with hundreds of millions of people affected by the disease by 2030. Diabetic retinopathy is important because it affects younger people, and it brings people under the age of 65 into eye clinics in need of eye care. And even in the, in the United States, fewer than half of people in some studies receive annual screening exams for diabetic retinopathy. The advent of Intravitreal injectable therapies has been wonderful for our patients, but also is causing a great increase in clinical volumes, especially with the frequency of treatments. And this increases the number of, of clinic visits required uh, for sick patients. Our shift towards preventive care is also going to cause our clinical populations to increase. We have difficulty as it is seeing all these sick people in the world. Imagine now as we have to open our clinics to healthier people seeking preventive care, uh, what an additional burden that will put uh, on our resources and clinical efficiency. At the same time that all these patient numbers are increasing so much, practitioner numbers are not increasing in the right proportions. For instance, in the United States over the last 15 years, we've trained approximately the same number of ophthalmologists every year. And without more ophthalmologists around the world, we think that we the, the disparity between patients and practitioners is only going to grow. So in summary, we feel that quantitative, objective, 
documented and standardized ex examination techniques should be the foundation for 21st century ophthalmology. And we worry that existing care models, the one doctor and one patient model, may no longer work as the disparity between numbers of patients and numbers of practitioners grows in the coming years for all the reasons I just laid out. To address this disparity, our first idea was to develop a self-administered, inexpensive screening instrument for retinal disease. In many places around the world, when you think about retinal screening, many people picture a non-midriatic camera. We don't picture a non-midriatic camera anymore. We feel that screening for retinal disease is better accomplished with a specialized pair of binoculars. Binoculars are much smaller than these large non-midriatic cameras, and therefore the decreased number of components will make them cheaper to produce. Most people around the world understand how to operate binoculars or can be trained very easily, so these in this instrument can be self-administered. And importantly, it scans both eyes at once. As a physician, I may want to order a picture on the right eye or the left eye, but when you're talking about eye screening, you really want to scan both eyes at once to minimize the time and maximize the effect. But what's inside these pair of binoculars? Fourier domain OCT instruments, one on each side. Again, this is a design that has been fully developed. It's based on existing technologies, but it has not yet been built as a prototype, and so it may never work. But as we were developing this prototype idea, we happened upon four ideas that we feel uh, are much bigger and may actually change the way that we practice ophthalmology on a day-to-day -day basis.